What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Datadash and today is May 16th of 2024. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, I'm not only here to speak about one of the most exciting layer one infrastructure plays on my radar, one of which I've been watching over the last two years, but beyond that as well is a protocol in which I believe is about to experience its S-curve growth of opportunity over the next couple of months to the next year as it solves for one of the biggest standing issues in crypto and web three that neither Ethereum nor other alternative L1s have truly solved for. Today, we're talking about none other than Aleph Zero or A0. Now, Aleph Zero is heavily focused on the concept of providing a programmable layer similar to other programmable networks like Ethereum, Polkadot, Cardano, and having the ability to have privacy baked into the protocol as a standard. And this to me is something really exciting. Now, I only want to spend some time today to not only talk about why I think Aleph Zero's proposition of focusing on privacy is so big and could play a huge role in getting the next wave of adoption for Web3 and crypto and many narratives that people are focused on. But beyond that as well, I want to talk about some of the ecosystem development. I want to talk about the roadmap, the team, and also dive into some really exciting business development or key opportunities within the Aleph Zero ecosystem, such as the common drop that's going to be coming soon, one of the big automated market maker protocols within the Aleph Zero ecosystem, and how you can participate in these and hopefully benefit as well. We got a lot to unpack here today's review, and I want to let you guys know that I'm proudly on board as ambassador for Aleph Zero because I believe in this vision of what the protocol is building. So let's go ahead and kick things off here, guys. Now, I want to start here by talking a little bit about why Aleph Zero's focus on privacy is so critical. If we take a look at the swarm of different L1s or L2s, the constant new L2s that are being launched within the Ethereum ecosystem, we see a lot of repetition of the same exact problem focusing on solving for scalability. And I think it's pretty abundantly clear if we really take a bird's eye view or look at any of the tools out there, scalability is not an issue. In the case of networks like you know, Optimism or Arbitrum, they utilize layer two scaling on top of the Ethereum network. Some go out there and launch entirely new layer one protocols with new consensus mechanisms like Radix DLT. In the case of Aleph Zero, they also meet to this as well, using direct and acyclograph technology or DAG tech, something I've been a big fan of since back in 2018, when Rayblox or now NanoCash, a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency, utilized DAG technology to hyperscale and go far beyond the kind of consensus-based value validation of transactions that you can get from a traditional blockchain like Bitcoin or Ethereum. So Alab Zero meets on all those kind of forefronts like most L1s. But the thing that really makes it exciting is its use of zero knowledge products and technologies to be able to allow for a real decentralized finance ecosystem, as well as other narratives like GameFi, tokenizing real world assets, you know, anything you can think of, but being able to do so in a privacy preserving manner. This is very big. And I'll list off a couple reasons here for Food for Thought, because if we think about you know, the current existing Web3 uh, paradigm where it is right now, real fundamental adoption of Web3 has been stagnant since back in 2019 and 2020. This has been the case for DeFi, because if you think about traditional financial institutions, maybe wanting to deploy applications, deploy capital, plug in their systems to Web3 architecture as well, bringing in a whole new wave of users and activity, while they may want to do this, not having a privacy layer baked in when it comes to transactions or interactions with dApps is a huge bottleneck. You know, you can't expose large amounts of clients' funds, let alone if you're a fund or some kind of manager, you're very much not likely to want to expose your balance or expose what kind of transactions you're engaging in. You want some degree of privacy. But outside of all this as well, there's also geographic limitations. Huge markets like Europe or the Eurozone, where GDPR is in effect, could have serious ramifications from pretty much blocking MVPs or new ideas and concepts from being deployed from companies and different entities within the Eurozone within blockchain-based ecosystems. I've seen this firsthand in a project I previously advised for. Um, you know, we, we constantly saw this bottleneck where an inability to have compliance with GDPR and the right to be forgotten or the ability to have some degree of privacy on chain was limiting a lot of these really cool MVPs from going into production. So this is something that's very vital to understand here, whether or not you believe privacy is just for people who just want to be anonymous or be able to do whatever they want and get away with it. I think overall privacy is a much more fundamental thing. We have layers of privacy on the web. We have layers of privacy in our financial transactions. We don't want a big public ledger showcasing every bit of detail. 
that value proposition I think is pretty clear. And it doesn't have to be uh, some negative narrative. In fact, I think it's a very positive one. But the big thing above all is that as Al of Zero is tapping into this, there is a lot of activity going on within its ecosystem and a lot of people building in anticipation of being able to tap into the fundamental layers of Al of Zero. If we take a look across the board in the ecosystem, as I mentioned, I really feel we're starting to see the early stage signs of projects building on the ecosystem using the framework and actually trying to realize the value of the network itself. There are core key, I would say, De DeFi or kind of Web3 primitives that are already being deployed, like A0ID, which can help with the actual domain name service functionality similar to ENS on the Ethereum network. But along with that as well, you're seeing core primitives like automated market makers or DEXs like Common, as well as a whole range of other networks tapping into different things like Synchra with its DAO focus and a whole range of other different types of projects out there. And we'll talk about some of these as we go through the video and talk about again, why privacy plays a role in all this, but you can already see that they've got a pretty budding ecosystem here that you can explore and you can see which ones are really gaining traction over the last 30 days within the ecosystem. The thing above all though, is that I wanna talk a little bit about the tech. I don't wanna to get too deep into it because I think at the end of the day, guys, you get the concept of why privacy is really important. And I also not only don't wanna talk completely as if I'm fully aware of how every bit of technology works or the underpinning of the protocol, I'm in no way a programmer by background, uh, nor am I a cryptography expert. But the big thing above all that I want to emphasize is that Al of Zero is not some project that just you know popped up overnight. Al of Zero, much like networks like Cardano and a whole range of other steadily built L1 protocols that have been well thought out and led by great quality teams, have been going through multiple phases over the past few years to get to the point where we're at now where the team is currently in progress on phase six. Now, again, as I emphasized here, I'm bringing Al of Zero to now because I really do believe it's the prime time to focus on it. We talked about it before, but I think now is really the time to start focusing in because a lot of the real value propositions, a lot of the big challenges and hurdles that other L1s have not completed yet are things that Al of Zero is either closing in on now or has already completed. For example, being able to have ZKID built into the network, as well as shielding PSP22 tokens for anonymous transactions. These are really exciting technologies and are some of the fundamental technological frameworks that are going to allow for Al of Zero to meet to its promise of privacy preservation. And they are complicated challenges to solve for. There's a reason a lot of other networks haven't done it yet. It's not something that can just be done overnight. And not to mention doing so in a way where it's going to work smoothly on a decentralized network that needs to be operating and running 24 seven. Hopefully not another scenario with Solana, right? We wanna see a network here that's gonna be able to operate at scale and is going to be able to actually have privacy preservation baked in. But there's also other technologies that will be coming in phase seven, shielded interactions with smart contracts and other additional privacy plugins as well as a core private wallet. Now, once this infrastructure comes into play though, I think it's gonna be a little bit late in the game to be focusing on Alice here because by that point, as we already have some of the base layers of privacy technology really being implemented in phase six, I think by that point, most people are, are really going to start becoming aware of Al of Zero by phase seven. But so now really is the time to, to start doing a bit of due diligence. For me personally, I'm very big about learning about the team. Uh, one thing that I really wanted to do before I became an ambassador to the protocol and really got you know, deep into studying Al of Zero is I wanted to meet some of the team. I wanted to do some due diligence on the concept. And I was very fortunate enough, I got to meet Anthony uh, from the team who's head of business operations and marketing. And I also got to meet Michael as well. And also learn a little bit about the backgrounds of the team members who were heading up things. And I have to tell you guys, it's a pretty star team. They not only have a ton of really great people on their core team at Cardinal, this is one of the internal teams or foundations that's focused on building out the base foundation of the overall Al of Zero ecosystem, but along that as well, a whole range of other partners and advisors that are contributing to the project. But having these guys at the forefront, a lot of really esteemed and well-known PhDs, as well as people who've worked at a lot of major corporates and their respective countries and jurisdictions, Al of Zero has got a really great set of minds 
coming together to actually solve for this problem of privacy in Web3. I'm not gonna dive into every single bio, but I definitely recommend you guys take a look into the founding team and learn a little bit about who's contributing to everything within Alum Zero. There are a lot of really heavyweights who are contributing to make it a really great project. And the great thing is, is that Alum Zero is not a white paper. As I mentioned, they've been building for the last couple of years. There's a live test net. If you guys want to learn about that test net, interact with it, learn how to deploy applications and, and try out all of Zero's technology, you can do so. You can even see what we were discussing earlier about uh, the consensus mechanism, the DAG or directed acyclic graph architecture, and the speed in which this can actually process blocks or transactions. I mean, you're seeing pretty much every second we're seeing basically about one block coming into play so this is really interesting stuff and you can also see the individual transactions that are happening within each block as we go down here and see what kind of contract calls uh, were done during that period of time so you can see that people are testing a functionality on the network they're utilizing the language framework that is offered uh, they utilize ink as well as wasm uh, for those of you who are interested in the technology this is again not similar to the abundance of other projects out there that are using the evm framework so they're kind of essentially ditching the old architecture of ethereum albeit as with all of zero and many other networks, it may be down the line that there might be some kind of integration of uh, EVM functionality. Time will have to tell here, uh, but overall, at the end of the day, Alab Zero is really making that bet that it can build a new framework of architecture for people to be able to deploy applications in a much more streamlined way as developers, and one of which, ones in which as well are much more not only easy to deploy, but also are secure as well. This is again why I put all of zero alongside Radix, alongside energy as a quote unquote secure L1. It, it really solves for a lot of the enterprise related issues such as privacy. That's what really makes it stand out. But beyond that as well, having a new entire framework that isn't the EVM compatible or solidity based framework where there's constant smart contract exploits really puts all of zero, I think in a much safer camp uh, than utilizing the old systems that still constantly have exploits, hacks and all types of different bad actors taking advantage of those, those inefficiencies. Wanted to go ahead though and talk a little bit about some of the key things going on within the development ecosystem of Alum Zero. One of the biggest things that was announced back in January, but is likely coming to the forefront very soon, is most. And this is essentially the core bridge that the team has been working on in order to get liquidity from Ethereum to all of zero and vice versa. So essentially building the core infrastructure bridge. And I think that this is imperative here because at the end of the day, whether or not all of zero has the best tech in the world, uh, we've said this as well about other networks as well like Radix, it doesn't matter at the end of the day if you have the best tech in the world, best concepts, um, you know, you at the end of the day, you need liquidity. You know, liquidity is the bread and butter of so many applications, not only of the primitives, uh, you know, within DeFi, like DEXs as well, as lending and borrowing protocols, but beyond that as well, it is going to really be what allows for, in many cases, I think, what we're all looking forward to, that wave of institutional money to be able to come in to these markets and these new networks. And I think that not only is it important for All of Zero to have this bridging technology, which we can see is very clear, intuitive, it builds into what many people expect, but outside of that as well, one of the really interesting things about All of Zero is that through its partnership, uh, it's actually going to be able to offer the ability to have some of the cheapest bridging transactions from Ethereum to the All of Zero network and vice versa. So this is really interesting from a factor that it is incredibly cheap to bridge into the ecosystem not to mention as well, there are incentives with this as well by bridging liquidity into the ecosystem. So this is all really good stuff that I think is going to pave the way for Alab Zero to see that wave of adoption. It's not only one thing to have a really cheap way to bridge liquidity, but to give that kind of incentive uh, for participation, bringing over liquidity, helping the ecosystem to grow as a whole. So if you guys wanna dive into some of the details, now this was one of the core blog posts uh, that they have on their website uh, with their partnership with Router and being able to actually deliver on this core infrastructure. But another thing as well that I think is really exciting from a biz dev perspective um, that I haven't seen a lot of talk about, but I think is, is quite big, is their work with ArcBlock to be able to launch their own native stablecoin within the ecosystem, one USD. 
Uh, this to me is really essential. Uh, essentially, all of zero is not only hoping to bridge liquidity over with the most bridge, but along with that as well, they're working with ArcBlock to launch a native stablecoin on the network and deploy that initial wave of liquidity. This is where, again, so many great L1s, unfortunately, from a biz dev perspective or from ecosystem development perspective, completely fall short of. They might have great tech, but they don't have that initial couple million dollars deploying in the ecosystem. So this is something that I think is going to allow for that and it's gonna bring that initial wave of liquidity that's gonna be desperately needed. And ArcBlock is a really respected partner in this space who's focused on kind of bringing in this first wave of liquidity and building custom made stable coins uh, for a whole range of different networks while following strict guidelines uh, around backing, uh, compliance, et cetera, all the kind of factors that we would need for a stable coin to succeed. But now I wanna go ahead and talk a little bit about what's going on with Common. Now, for those who don't know about Common, Common is a really exciting AMM. I mean, essentially, you not only should follow them on Twitter so you can get all the details, but Common as a protocol has a really interesting focus on taking advantage of the privacy layer within the All of Zero ecosystem. So there's a key thing to understand, which is that as we go through here and take a look at some of the biggest feature sets, there's the ability to have aggregated private orders. So tapping into this ability to use ZK knowledge and a whole range of other privacy preserving technologies, in this case, Common will allow you to make swaps and expose very minimal, if any, information at all when conducting those swaps. And this is very imperative here because not only does it have market order abilities so you can do typical AMM swaps from one asset to another, but beyond that as well, when you have order book functionality with limit orders and different types of custom orders that you're used to on a traditional centralized exchange or in traditional financial exchanges, this is going to allow for, I think in many ways, a lot of institutional liquidity to come in. Liquidity that you would typically find on the order books of traditional brokerages, dark pools, et cetera. Having people have that ability to make privacy preserving transactions on L1s like L0 is going to be very big. And Common being at the forefront of this is definitely one of the most exciting ecosystem projects. And I think one of the most well thought through and developed from a resource perspective and a kind of use case perspective. You know, AMMs are always gonna be necessary in practically any L1 or L2. So for me, it's already quite interesting. But if you consider all of the feature sets that it has versus a whole range of other networks when it comes to their AMMs, I get really excited here, not to mention it's focused on multi-chain trading, et cetera. So this is definitely one to keep on your radar. And I wanna emphasize that for Common, they have their upcoming drop that has just been announced. So if you guys are interested in learning about how to participate in the Common drop, there are definitely a lot of really important details that you should know about. First off, of course, I'll leave the link down below in the description where you guys can read into the fine print. But there are a couple things that I wanna emphasize for you guys. First off, this is going to reward a lot of people who are staking out of zero, as is one of kind of the core dApps within the overall ecosystem. So essentially, you're going to be collecting drops as you participate as a staker within the network. But there are also a lot of fine details as well. Uh, for those who have already been staking all of zero for some time, you essentially are getting the OG drop. So for those who have already been long-term participants, that's already really exciting news. But outside of that as well, there are a whole range of other things like the lucky draw feature, where essentially if you have a smaller stake of all of zero and you want a chance at potentially increasing the number of staking drops, you can do so. And there will also be common LP drops. So so for people who are providing liquidity, if you're bridging liquidity over uh, through the bridge uh, from Ethereum, USDT, USDC, I would assume some of the major stable coins, and providing that liquidity for A0 pairs or various different pairs on the common DAP, then by being an LP, you're also increasing your potential rewards through the common drop. Now the common drop essentially will allow you to collect drops over time and that will affect the amount of claims that you'll be able to make on the native common token or CMN. So if you're interested to learn a little bit more about that, guys, I definitely recommend you read through the article from Matt. He did a really great job breaking this down. This is one of the big ecosystem development uh, things that are going on right now within All of Zero. So if you're generally bullish or optimistic long-term on All of Zero, then I think this is definitely one of those kind of ground floor opportunities in the space that really could grow up to becoming one of the big DeFi protocols and maybe even something beyond an AMM long term uh, for the broader uh, ecosystem of Alves here. We'll have to see. Uh, but I think overall Common has been one that I've been aware of. Uh, they've been again building for a long time uh, since the early days when I was starting to follow the protocol itself. There's also other ecosystem projects like Kinsu. Uh, Kinsu is focused on essentially becoming I think the, the key LSD or, or like 
liquid staking solution within the Al Zero ecosystem. Again, another key primitive here within Al Zero's broader ecosystem. They recently launched on testnet back on May 13th, so they've been live for about two days. So if you guys want to you know, kind of check into that and see how things are going, I definitely recommend you dive into that as well. And outside of that as well, one of the projects we talked about, Synchro earlier, is one of the DAO as a service platforms utilizing some of the privacy preserving technology from Alice Core Tech. And I think that overall we can see here that there's a lot of the base layer tech being built out. And this is going to allow for a lot of new ecosystem projects to come out of this. Once you have an AMM, once you have DAO based technology, once you have liquid staking, where essentially you're able to essentially reuse or utilize your Al Zero tokens that are being staked for consensus and being committed to validators and the network, still being able to use that in DeFi is going to bring about a lot of different liquidity in the space, provide deeper liquidity for swaps and other types of features within Al Zero. So I definitely think you guys should dive into some of these materials if you wanna dive into understanding about what these protocols do. Um, the big other thing I wanted to emphasize is that as many of you know, um, we've also been working with AngelBlock for a long time. It's one of the few protocols that I'm really excited about from a fundraising perspective. AngelBlock has got a lot of really interesting focus on emerging L1s, and one of those ecosystems is the broader Al Zero ecosystem. So I definitely recommend you guys follow AngelBlock, keep posted on it. Um, if you're looking for some of the early stage projects that want to raise uh, for Al Zero, um, or essentially are Al Zero based ecosystem projects that are looking to raise, keep an eye on AngelBlock. It might be a great way to participate in some of those earlier rounds on different protocols again not financial advice, it's up for you guys to determine that. There's a lot of great resources as AngelBlock is one of the few um, platforms that I would say for fundraising or Launchpad, if you wanna use that term, it essentially allows for AngelBlock to be one of the most transparent when it comes to token vesting, and along with this well, giving you the ability to play a role in the governance process and delivery milestones as to whether or not teams should receive extra portions of the funding that were committed for that early stage concept. But in closing, I wanna spend some time here to talk a little bit about the native token for the network, A0, do a little bit of price analysis on what I'm looking for, and outside of that as well, let you guys know about the key utilities and the general role the currency plays. Uh, now, the core fundamentals of the token are, are pretty self-explanatory. A0 serves as a core utility token or native currency within the network, so this allows you to pay for network fees, for swap fees, for a whole range of different things within the network, but also plays a big role in validation data node staking, and generally speaking for governance and all the typical things that you would see for a layer one. So there's no big surprises there by any means. That's not a bad thing. I think overall it's good to basically stick with what works. And outside of that as well, it's more important now to see whether or not there's that adoption wave for Al of Zero. Now it is important to note that Al of Zero being a proof of stake cryptocurrency, not only plays a big role in obviously consensus, but also with the yield you generate. Uh, the yield, last time I checked for A0 is around 11%. So it is important to factor that in here when you're talking about the price performance. But beyond that guys, I wanna give you really my candid take here. Uh, put aside that you know, I'm an ambassador for the project, I wanna be genuinely honest with you guys here about Al of Zero. A0 overall, similar to Radix and many networks that I've been focused on here and watching for that potential next run up, right now have been generally channeling sideways here. And it's been doing so since back here in 2022, since its initial listing on MEXC. And that's a fair thing to state here um, because it's just the reality of it. The big thing above all though, is that whether you're looking for short term or long term, I'm looking for that consistent trend above the 21 day moving average, as I would with any other play in the market. Well, LF0 is on the lower range here, so I think it's it's much more favorable from a risk reward perspective to build a longer term position and even a short term swing trade down at this range below the 21 day, um, as we're down here where we, we saw buyers come in last time in June of 2022 and here in September and October of 2023, not to mention, I think there's more momentum now than ever, so it lines up pretty well. At the same time, I would wait for a nice clear break above that 21 day moving average. Uh, we saw a break the other week, uh, week back here in early May. 
wasn't able to hold here. I think it got a little bit ahead of itself, uh, but maybe we start to see that break away here over the next couple of weeks in a, a situation where there's continued optimism. But in the same way we've talked about radix in the past uh, or energy, for me personally, these are fundamental plays that have a lot of value potential. They have a huge issue that they're solving for, and I think that's a big reason why you're seeing this kind of accumulation pattern here. I think longer term, people are building larger positions in the event that we see that demand for privacy. We see the continued increase in the demand for real world assets, institutional DeFi, and these are one of the few well-coordinated plays out there that you can really make that bet on in the market, as there aren't really many players out there that are tapping into this focus on privacy. So again, market price will dictate and showcase the, the demand for that if it does come over the next couple of weeks and months. I think as the ecosystem development plays out, I think as LF0 is getting close to finishing the later stages of its roadmap here, going in to the next couple of months, the next year, this is going to be a really big one to keep on your radar. And today we just really scratched the surface. We tried to do a broad overview, or at least I tried to do my best here to give you guys a broad overview of what LF0 is building, why I think is a big deal, and also some of the important things you guys should know about. If you guys are interested to get your hands on LF0 or A0, I not only recommend you guys dive through the website. There are a ton of great resources if you want to become a developer and contribute to the network, as well as a built-in funding program to get that initial funding to launch a new great idea within a zero's ecosystem. But outside of that as well, if you want to, uh, for example, explore a variety of the different projects, you can explore the ecosystem by clicking the button in the top right on its website and dive into all these different projects in their categories. And along with that as well, you can check out the various exchanges for all of zero. So if you guys are interested to get a zero in your portfolio, there's a whole range of different exchanges out there that will allow you to trade it from KuCoin, Maxi, and so many more. So overall guys, that's it for today's video. If you did enjoy this video, consider dropping a like. It's a great way to support the channel. I'll leave some links down below in the description so you guys can do your own due diligence. As always guys, I'm here to bring you guys the projects I find interesting. I think above all though, that you shouldn't just take my word for it. Go out there, do your own research, let me know what you think down below in the comments, what you like about LF0, maybe some questions that you have, and feel free to join their Telegram and Discord if you guys are interested to engage with the broader ecosystem. You can find those on their website on the right-hand side. That's it for today's video, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching, as always. Again, if you enjoyed it, consider dropping a like, share with a family member, and until the next video, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.